Hello everyone. Today I would like to give an update on Jailscope Client and Libscope HAL development and demonstrate some of the new features. So right now we're looking at two channels of 100 megabit Ethernet. We've got the transmit and receive differential pairs on four scope channels. So let's take a closer look at these. So we're going to begin by subtracting the differential pairs. This is our transmit side and we don't need that anymore. And that's our receive side. Let's do some clock recovery on here so we can pull up an eye pattern. Uh, notice I'm putting 125 as the symbol rate rather than 100 because there is line coding overhead and we care about the physical layer symbol rate here. And our threshold is going to be 500 millivolts because that's the middle of the upper eye. And let's do clock recovery on this as well. Use our recovered clock for that and pull that up in another viewport. And I pattern on the receive side as well. Let's change the color scheme. Something a little bit nicer. And let's see what we're going to do next. We want to see a protocol decode. Probably want history as well. Let's do a decode on the receive side. We're probably not going to see much traffic on the decode because this network doesn't have a ton of activity on it right now, but there's probably going to be a packet here and there we can take a look at. Oh, perfect. There we go. So if we click on a packet in the protocol analyzer, we immediately jump to the start of the packet right there. Let's get that one out of the way. And we can view the waveform, look at the full protocol decode, we can see the packet body, this looks like a ping packet I believe, We've got the repeating data pattern and then the CRC at the end, and obviously we can move around in the history view and then jump back to any saved packet in the protocol analyzer. So let's get those out of the way for a moment go back to the live feed. So just at a glance, the receive eye is a lot less open than the transmit. So let's drill down a little bit more into that and see what we can see. So let's see what we want to do first. Let's look at bit error rate. Eh. Yeah, let's pull up a bathtub curve on here first. So we're looking at about the 500 millivolt mark. And we don't need that. Let's actually pull this down here. Just get it out of the way. And put that off on the side. So that is our top eye. So that is the bit error rate on our upper eye opening. And let's take a look at the bit error rate on the bottom one at the minus 500 millivolt mark. And put that over there. Okay, so these all look fairly good. We've got a nice wide open eye, which is unsurprising. So let's take a look at some additional measurements. Let's take a look at our bit rate. We're not going to see much until we do stats on there. All right, so let's take a look at some jitter measurements here. So we're going to look at the say 400 to 600 millivolts and we'll just do stats. We don't need to see the whole plot on there. And let's look at bottom jitter. And let's actually take a look at the jitter plot on this one. I'm going to copy that to another viewport, maybe there. 
we just want stats here and then let's take a closer look at our jitter over here so unsurprisingly we've got the uh, most jitter as we get further from the decision threshold and we've got less jitter as we get closer uh, the signal is slightly attenuated because it's been through a bit of cable so unsurprisingly even though nominally at the transmitter the uh, midpoint of the eye opening should be about minus 500 millivolts we actually have the best opening from a jitter perspective at around let's actually see at about 450 millivolts which looks about right the eye is again a little bit shrunk from where it would be at the transmitter so let's take a look at some additional stats here uh, let's see how wide our eye openings are at various points so let's see eye width from let's say width at 400 to 600 millivolts we're going to put that down there all right we got a decent opening here let's look at the stats on that as well get that out of the way see width on the bottom say minus 400 to minus 600 millivolts and stats on that as well and let's see what are some other fun things we can do let's look at eye heights as well say plus or minus 500 picoseconds in the upper eye there's our opening there and let's see our height at the bottom as well same range 500 picoseconds to 500 picoseconds at minus 500 millivolts and we're going to pull that down there as well so we can see the overall shape of the openings is about the same nothing super exciting let's pull them back up into this viewport so we can have all the stats in the same spot and let's go back and take a look at the other eye and see how that compares we're just going to look at bit error rate now so over here we've got the bathtubs for the receive side let's take a look at how the transmit side compares so we're going to pull up a bathtub curve at 500 millivolts and we're going to push that off onto the other side so this is the receive side and this is the transmit side and you can see if we actually let's stack them it'll be a little bit more obvious there so we can see that the bit error rate opening is significantly smaller on the receive side and the transmit which is expected the signal is a lot weaker so i hope this has been a good demonstration of the capabilities of geoscope client we are always looking for additional developers, users, feedback, bug reports, etc. And thank you for watching.